Hey, I'm Rajat Tyagi. I'm a product manager in the EC2 networking team. And today I'll be talking about Verified Access' new feature that enables zero trust access to resources over non-HTTP protocols. Hi everyone, this is Ankush Koyal. I'm Senior Technical Account Manager here at AWS. Today I will be giving you a demo how you can use this new feature by using ABA. Thank you, Rajat. Thanks, Ankush. Before we talk about the new feature, let me give you a brief overview of what Verified Access is. Verified Access is a reverse proxy that integrates with your identity provider as well as your device security service and allows you to define fine-grained access policies which are based upon users' identity as well as their de device security state. For example, you can define simple policies such as allowing only members of your finance staff with managed and compliant devices to access finance applications. Now, let's look at how verified access works for non http resources. So based on our customer interviews, we learned that there are two types of non http resources. The first are persistent resources, which are more stable parts of architecture. Some examples include applications, databases, such as Git repositories. These resources remain a part of your architecture for a long period of time, unless you explicitly migrate or upgrade from them. The second types of resources are ephemeral resources, which are more temporary parts of your architectures, such as EC2 instances, which scale up and down based on the compute demand. So for example, if your application witnesses surge in traffic, EC2 instances spin up to meet the heavy traffic requirements. And once the applications, uh, once the traffic subsides, the EC2 instances, which are no longer needed, terminate. Based on this understanding, we launched the new feature of Verified Access. This feature is in public preview. With using Verified Access for no accessing non-HTTP resources, you can improve your security posture by providing zero trust access to your non-HTTP resources. You can simplify your security operations by using just one solution, one tool to manage access for all your applications and resources on AWS. And finally, you can onboard resources at scale without spending too much time. Let's see how. So we've launched support for two new endpoints. The first is TCP endpoint, which is built for persistent resources. This enables access to your applications, tools, databases, and eliminates relying on static credentials only. So now you can add or augment your existing applications to, uh, and you can add zero trust security controls on top of it, ensuring you have better uh, security as well as observability into who is accessing what. The second type of endpoint that we've launched is called the network endpoint, which is built for ephemeral resources. This allows you to onboard resources at scale by specifying a network. Once you specify the network, the endpoint enables access to each resource on the network. The users still connect to one resource at a time, and every time they connect to a resource, their policy is enforced and their access is logged. We've built network endpoint in keeping in mind that every time any new resources spin up or down, admins don't have to take any kind of actions from their side. And while at the same time, the user experience to access these resources remains easy and convenient for developers. Let's see how. For network endpoint, you can delegate as a subdomain from your organization. Once you do so, Verified Access generates a public DNS record for each active resource in the specified network. These DNS records are uh, generated in the delegated subdomain, ensuring that your users get to use user-friendly DNS records which are aligned with your organization and your admins don't have to take any kind of actions every time any time a use a new resource is spun up or created in the same network let's let's just look at this in action so for example if there is a new resource that is added verified access will immediately connect to the new resource and it generates a public dns record in the delegated zone that uh, you have delegated and uh, IT administrators from their side don't have to take any new action to onboard this resource or enable connectivity to it. 
and at the same time your end users can simply access the new resource using the public dns record to access non http resources users would also require a device client installed on uh, their devices so we have launched a new product component called the connectivity client the connectivity client is a very lightweight application that connects your users devices to the, uh, to the aws resources that they want to access and it runs in the background allowing developers and analysts to use their continue using their favorite tools such as putty or sql workbench without any change or disruption the connectivity client is available for both Mac and Windows operating systems, and it allows users to access resources in different regions simultaneously without having to disconnect and reconnect. Thank you. And uh, let's see this feature in action. I'm going to hand it over to Ankush for a quick demo. Thank you. Thank you, Rajat. For this demo, we will use this architecture where I have EC2 instances running in my private subnet in my VPC and my remote users need to SSH into these EC2 instances over the internet. For this, we will use AWS Verified Access and we'll see how Verified Access can help us to control which user can SSH into these EC2 instances and which user cannot. For that, we'll start by creating our first component, Verified Access Instance, along with the trust providers. As we know, Verified Access support two type of trust provider, identity-based or the device-based. Next, we'll create our Verified Access group where we can define the policy that what type of user can SSH into this EC2 instances. Like, I have defined a policy here saying that if my user email address belong to a domain1.com, only those users should be able to SSH into this EC2 instances. Next, we'll create our verified access endpoints. In this case, we will use the network cider base endpoints, which are the new endpoints we have released. Once the, this network endpoints or the verified access endpoints are available, when the SSH user one will try to SSH into these EC2 instances, based on the policy we have defined at the group level, this user will be allowed to SSH into these EC2 instances. But, when the user 2 try to SSH into these EC2 instances, the request will be blocked because the policy we have defined at the group level only allow users with the domain name as a domain1.com is allowed to SSH. Next, let's go to the console and see how it works in action. I have logged in into my AWS console and I am on my EC2 dashboard. Here you will see the EC2 instance which my remote users would like to SSH into and the private IP address of this EC2 instance is 10.0.1.246. Next, we have created two users, SSH user1, which has an email address of xyz at the rate domain1.com. And by the second user, will have an email address of abc at domain2.com. Next, let's go to our VPC dashboard and scroll down towards the bottom. Under the AWS Verified Access, first we'll create our first component, Verified Access Trust Provider. For that, we'll select Create Verified Access Trust Provider, which will open a new screen where you will provide the name tag, a description, and a policy reference name. The, this policy reference name will be used while writing the policies at the Verified Access group in the endpoint level. For the trust provider type, we are creating user trust provider and for that we'll use our IAM identity center as the trust provider type. Then we'll select create verified access trust provider. For this demo, I have already created a verified access trust provider. The next component we will create is verified access instance. For that, we'll select create verified access instance, which will open a new screen. There you will provide the name tag, a description. For the network cider endpoint specifically, you have option to provide a custom subdomain. So when you create a network cider endpoints in AVA, it creates a DNS name for each of your EC2 instances and that DNS name you can use to SSH into those 
EC2 instances. If you'd like to customize those DNS names with your company DNS name, you can provide that DNS name here and those DNS names will be customized with your company domain name. In this example, I'm not using any custom domain name, but towards the end of the video, I'll show an example where I have a custom subdomain and how my endpoints or DNS endpoint for those EC2 instances looks different from the regular endpoint DNS names. Next, you will select the verified access trust provider and select create verified access instance. For this demo, I have already created a verified access instance. Next component will create a verified access group. For that, we'll select create verified access group and it will open a new page where you will provide the name tag, a description. You will select the verified access instance which we created and you will provide the policy. Here you can see we'll use the same policy reference name which we provided while creating the trust provider. And this policy is saying that any user who has an email address with the domain name of domain1.com will be allowed to access my endpoints. So we have a, we have two users, SSH user1, which has the email address ending with domain name domain1.com. So that user should be able to access our application. But the second user who has an email address of abc at domain2.com should not be able to access or SSH into the EC2 instances. We'll select create verified access group and it will create a verified access group. For this demo, I have already created a verified access group. Next component, we will create verified access endpoints. For that, we'll select create verified access endpoint, which will open a new screen. There, we will provide a name tag, a description, and verified access group with which this endpoint will be associated. Then we'll select the protocol TCP, attachment type as VPC, and endpoint type as network cider. If you want to create endpoint for the RDS database, you can do that as well by selecting Amazon RDS endpoints. We'll select the VPC where our EC2 instances are running, and then we'll provide a cider range. What AWS Verified Access will do, it will create a separate domain name for each of the IP address of this site or range. So if you want to give access, SSH access to all the EC2 instances running in your VPC, you can provide the site or range of the VPC. Or if you want to restrict it to a particular subnet, then you can provide the site or range of that particular subnet as well. Then we'll provide the port range. Because we are providing access to SSH, then we are using only the port 22 here. We'll select the subnets where AV endpoints, ENIs will be created and a security group. If you want to use a prefix to your domain name, you can do that by adding a prefix here. In addition to that, if you want to enforce additional policy at the endpoint level, you have option to put that policy as well. For this demo, we are not using any additional policy and then we'll select create verified access endpoint. For this demo, we have already created a verified access endpoint. Verified access also provides you a DNS record for each of the used IP from the cider range you provided while creating the endpoint. Here you will notice that the DNS used or the domain used for these DNS names are owned by AWS. But if you would have provided a custom DNS name while creating your verified access instance, in that case, verified access instance will use that particular custom domain which you have provided while creating the instance. And here is an example of that. Next, we will use the DNS name or the domain name provided here to SSH into that EC2 instance. To SSH into the EC2 instance by using verified access endpoints, you need to download the connectivity client and install it on your computer so based on your operating system, you can download it from AWS documentation. Next, you need to export the client configuration file from the verified access instance. For that, you will go to verified access instance page, select the instance, click on action and export client configuration. And then you will deploy this configuration file at a particular location as mentioned in AWS documentation. I have performed both of those activity and have installed the connectivity client. Next. We'll open the connectivity client and we'll click on sign in. It will open my AWS portal 
where we can provide the SSS user ID. So my username and I'll click on next. We'll provide the password and sign in. We click on allow access. And within few minutes, our connectivity client will be connected. Next, we'll go to the terminal and we'll try to SSH into this EC2 instance by using that DNS name. Okay, I have opened my terminal and we'll try to SSH into this EC2 instance. Here we see the moment we give our command, we are able to access this EC2 instance over port 22. Next, let's log in by using our second user, SSH user2, who is using the domain 2.com, which is not allowed by AVA group policy, and see whether we can SSH into this EC2 instance or not. I have opened my connectivity client and we'll click on sign in. Here we'll provide our second user, SSH user2, sign in, provide the password. Okay, my connectivity client is connected. Now let's try to do SSH by using this user. Let's rerun this SSH command. And this time you will see you are not able to SSH into the EC2 instance because of the policy written at the verified access group level. This concludes our demo for today. Here we saw how you can create verified access instance endpoints, how you can write policies at the group level, and how you can control which user can SSH into the EC2 instances and which user cannot. Thank you so much for watching, folks. Have a nice day. Bye.